Good evening. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Hello, Linda. Blessings to you. Mr. James, how you doing? Good afternoon. Aloha, Oscar from the island. How you doing, Alana? I will wait for a little bit on the feed. And uh, we will start. With the news for you guys. How you doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News. Good afternoon to everyone. Let's uh, uh, let's do this again. I was riding in a car, and uh, you know I was getting interrupted by comments that they're not you know on the subject. So let's stay on the subject, people, please. How you doing? Good afternoon. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News. Uh, last minute update. Uh, you know there's uh, there's several groups that they are supporting the caravan. There's a lot of groups that they're supporting the caravan. There's a lot of organizations that they are supporting the caravan. There's a lot of, uh, you know, this, you know, uh, organizations that they're bringing lawyers that they're supporting the caravan. There's a lot of organizations that they're trafficking that they're supporting the caravan. So, what happened? Apparently they have frozen accounts. They have all these organizations, not the, all of them, but the majority of them, they, the government has frozen their accounts. The majority of them were directed to the city of Querétaro, and from Querétaro, they were moving up to six different states. The six different states is the six different uh, you know, uh, cities where you, uh, the majority of this uh, invasion of immigrants are crossing by. As we are saying, uh, Querétaro, it was the number one city that it was detaining all this money and they got frozen the account. From that, they cannot move the amount of money to the six states that there is Coahuila, Tamaulipas, Nuevo León, Chihuahua, Sonora, and Baja California. Those six states they were moving accounts from the city of Querétaro to all those six states. What is that? What it, what does these? Uh, what the does? What does that mean? It means that somebody already put a lot on their, you know, transferring their money to, and they're cracking them down, and they know who they are, and they're putting a stop to all this trafficking of children and trafficking of people that is happening in our country. It's kind of weird that all of this started happening since yesterday, since Marcelo Ebrat had a reunion with Pompeo. It's kind of it's kind of a weird that this started happening because of President Trump started putting pressure on the 5% increase on automobiles. It's kind of weird that last night or yesterday, Mr. Trump tweeted that if they don't comply with the 5% increase, one of the purposes is to bring all the enterprise, the automobile enterprises and the automobile industry back to the United States. It's kind of funny that we were talking about that two days ago and I was giving you statistics and stats about what was the purpose and the strategy on President Trump increasing the 5% uh, and 5% on the automobile industry. It's kind of weird that we talked about, you know, United States being number two on the automobile industry, number one is China, seven is Mexico, and they got all these all these companies in our country that is Hyundai, General Motors, Nissan, uh, uh, Ford, uh, Toyota, all the big monsters, they're over here. And after we talked about and we knew that it was gonna be a strategy for the automobile industry to push our president to lower down and to act like a third world class country, secure third world world class country for the immigrants. It's kind of funny that all started 
changing from one day to another. Yes, it is, people. Yes, it is. Imagine if President Trump only threatened with 5%. Imagine what would have happened if he would have said, I will increase at 20% and the dollar is going to blow up all the way up and I will get my companies back if you guys don't handle your security in your country. And after that, it's kind of funny that in the next day, one of the uh, the leaders of Pueblo Sin Fronteras in Mexico, Irineo Mujica, got busted with uh, his accomplice. It's kind of funny that all these things started happening. I think that the arrangement between Marcelo Brad and Pompeo, or Marcelo Brad and one of the representatives, uh, representatives of uh, the U.S. government, it was security of their borders, security of the Mexican border, and security of the United States border. It's kind of funny that all these things started happening. I just told you guys a couple of days ago that 4.1 thousand million, it's the amount that Mexico exports to the United States on vehicles per year. It's kind of, you know, I told you guys that it's 307,000 million that Mexico exports on everything, on everything to the United States per year. It's, uh, I, we told you guys that uh, 181.1 thousand million, it's what the United States imports to Mexico. We told you guys yesterday that replacement parts Replacement parts are the number two uh, export that uh, Mexico does to the United States with 28,000 million that we export to the United States. So we already know that the automobile industry is the number one in the world. And for Donald Trump to put an increase on 5% and for him to tweet that that if Mexico doesn't comply, he will bring the automobile industry and a lot of companies back to his country. We were, we were. We were talking about that two days ago. Two days ago, we were talking about it on a live feed. And I show you stats and I show you numbers. And not because of me. It's because we are reading together and we are finding this information. As we are finding this information, we are educating ourselves on how President Trump is pressuring Mexico to control his borders and to stop this fluency of migrants to go up to the north. Not only that, apparently he pressured that much for him to say, you know what, stop this guy, Irineo Mujica, control this guy, and froze the accounts of all these organizations that they're trafficking money to all the six states and all the most important borders that they cross to the United States. It's kind of funny that everything started happening from one day to another. So imagine what I was telling you guys yesterday. Imagine if Donald Trump would have said, not 5%, let's huh, increase 20 to 25 percent and I will close the border at the next day. Imagine if he would have done that. He will immediately, our president would immediately sign out the pact. There's a lot of money involved and there's a lot of business involved. And President Trump is a businessman. He's not a politician. He's a businessman and he's dealing, he's dealing right now with politicians. And he's hitting them in the pocket. Huh? 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 He's hitting them in the pocket. That if you want to hurt a man, don't hurt him at his women. Hurt him in the pocket. So 5% increase, this is how, this is what they have done with the 5% increase. Imagine if it would have been 25%. Imagine if it would have been 25%. It would have resolved the problem from the get-go. These people will be right now signing the damn pact. Out of it. Mexico, out of it. All of these people, you're out. Close the door. Put the National Guard in Chapas. Thanksgiving, they call it a night. Done. But they're they're moving out slowly. You know, the government of the United States is not backing down. And apparently, if they don't come to an agreement with a 5% increase, things are going to happen. And apparently, last night's meeting was so strong that one of the leaders from Pueblos y Fronteras got arrested and today 
And today they they froze in the account of all organizations like Rapid Response, like uh, 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 Al Otro Lado, like Border Angels, like, you know, uh, People Without Borders. Probably they froze in those accounts. Probably. Like Caravan Support Network, like all those accounts. Like all those accounts, probably they're frozen. Why do you think? Why? Why do you guys think? They already know who's moving. They already know who's moving so much money and down and down in center of Mexico in Querétaro. They already know how they're spreading their money. They already know. So it took. Look how much it took. First, it was a threat. I will close the border. Didn't happen. Second, it was another threat. I will close the border and I call for national security. And if I call for national security, and if I close the, 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 the border, uh, something's going to happen. So he closed two lanes in Laredo, two lanes in Arizona, and two lanes over here in Tijuana. And he tried to act like he was fixing the lanes to cross the United States. So he closed some. So the president was like, hey, hold on. What are you doing? The president of Mexico was like, hey, oh, psh, uh, hey, Trump, come down a little bit, you know? So he said, you know what? I will give you one year a chance. So that it was the biggest mistake. And after that, now it said, you know what? You're not doing anything about it. You're not doing anything about it. So I'm just going to huh, give you 5% increase on automobile industry. That is the most important automobile. The automobile industry is the most important in the world for exporting to Mexico and importing. So I'm going to increase you the 5%. And not only that, I will pressure you for you to control for you to control your for you to control the immigrants coming in and if you're not controlling them and if you're not containing them and if you're not controlling them and you're not containing them I will raise the increase until you know the next day What would it happen if he would have said, you know what, 25%, hell out of here with a 5%, 25. What would it happen if President Trump would have said, you know what, a hell with 5%, man, that's a slap in the wrist. I will get my money back and you guys are going to, you guys are going to know who's the boss here. 25%. What would it happen? <laughs> a lot of things will be solved right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, right now. In a matter of minutes. Look at that, 5% increase. And this guy from international relations was calling non-stop Trump. Hey, answer me the phone, man. Answer me the phone. Answer me the phone. Come on, man. Answer me the phone. It is unbelievable. It's great. They're getting things done. It's something uh, we are moving. We're moving. That means that it's getting resolved. We're moving. You know, it's it's a uh, it's 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 a little snowball that is growing, but it's growing positive right now. As of right now, it's growing positive. And not only that, for you guys to know, on Saturday we're gonna have a, a really uh, busy day. A really busy day. I have something to do late. Uh, you know, late Saturday, but uh, we'll make time. Why? Because our president is coming to Tijuana. President AMLO is coming to Tijuana. Really important visit. Uh, he's coming, basically. Uh, Morena, that is his uh, political party, is the one they won by a landslide uh, this past weekend. They won by a landslide, uh, you know, this Sunday. And... Uh, also, you know, he won, they won over here by gov, they won over here as governor and they won over here as mayor and all the districts they won over here. So Morena invited the president to come and celebrate, but not only that, uh -huh, you're not coming over here just to celebrate. You're coming over here to, ex to express to the Tijuana citizens and to express to the Tijuana public. What do you want to express, Amlo? 
I want you guys to help me. I am pleading for your help for humanity. I want you guys to listen, Tijuana citizens, and to back us up and support us on this illegal immigrant movement. That's what he wants to do. He wants to come over here, give a big statement to everybody, and say to everybody, you know what? Help us out. Be more human. Imagine asking people that know, people that have a brain in Tijuana, because a lot of them, they don't have a brain, and they're following this political party. But imagine people that have a brain, and AMLO speaking and saying, you know what? Help us out. Be more human. After all that we've been through since 2015, that we received 15,000 people from Haiti, and we were so human to help them out. And not only that, we were human enough when they came on November in Baiting, and they were sitting down, and we gave them three shelters. And not only that, we let a lot of activists come into our city and do whatever the hell they want with it. And not only that, we are letting lawyers come over here to our city and practice the law unlawfully and violate Article 33 of the Constitution. And not only that, we're getting traffickers from Haiti, from Africa, from the Middle East over here working with traffickers over here in Tijuana. And not only that, they're making fake marriages and they're making fake families and they're crossing illegally every day using a loophole. And not only that, activists saying that Mexico, when has Mexico provided help? So, regarding all those things that they already burned a federal building in Mexicali, they burned a federal building in Oaxaca, they're trafficking children, trafficking humans, things that were already repeated like 60 million times, and he wants us to be a little bit more human. Wow. So on Saturday, we are going over there with a... Uh, with uh, more activists, nationalist activists, that they are from Tijuana. They are from Tijuana, this national activists, they are from Tijuana. And we are going to try to ask him. They're not going to let me in, people. They're not. They're going to put a lot of barriers and permits for me to ask him one question. Are you registered in the national journalists across the world with articles 15,000, exhibit A, exhibit B, on paragraph number three that says that you need to have an ID on exhibits uh, D, E, H, W, X, and Y? They're going to do that. They're going to do that. So I'm just going to wait from the outside and with a loudspeaker... I'm going to ask him a question because he said that he was going to listen to every citizen that has a complaint about his government. So with with a loudspeaker, I'm going to ask him a question. When he's talking, I'm going to be like, Mr. President, can I ask a question? Because there's 15,000 permits that I need to have to ask you a question. So, can I ask you just one question? And if he says yes, you know, there's a lot of activists, nationalist activists, that they're going to be on Saturday. They're going to be on Saturday on that spot. And a lot of them want to ask him this question. Why you don't stop the fluency of immigrants? Why you're giving them more rights than you're giving to us? Why don't you take care of your own poor people like you said so? 
Why are you spending so many millions of pesos of rations of food when there's people dying in hunger in your country? Why are you trying to be Maduro? Why are you trying to uh, create a revolution, Boliboriana, uh, that you're not even involved? That is not even your country. Why? We were trying to ask that question. So be, uh, you know, be uh, watching on Saturday. Be sure to be watching on Saturday. We will have our president on Saturday over here in downtown and the city of downtown. And we will try to, you know, not confront him. Ask him questions. And to see what kind of a, uh, answer he has. And I already know his answer. You know what his answer is going to be? We need to support the immigrants. We need to support the immigrants. We need to support. We're tired of that answer. We're just tired of that. We're really tired of that answer. It's not resolving anything. And it's because you're not getting things resolved in Chiapas. We get now a 5% increase and probably our dollar is going to go up. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stop this or are you going to let it continue? So uh, for you guys to know, recap, uh, frozen accounts from different organizations that they support the caravan. Frozen accounts, uh, that is great. Why? Because the control needs to have, the government needs to have control of that. Not, not to, you know, uh, not, their, not the own organization need to have control of it. We are human rights where, you know, we can do whatever we want with our money. No, 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 no. Nobody, no, hell with you. Nobody, you're in my country and things got get run differently over here. And the people that run my country are the Mexican government. And if Mexico wants to run this and they want to put a stop to it, you're not going to have the freedom that you were having. Okay? So that is regarding the recap. There's a lot of frozen accounts from different organizations that they're supporting the caravan. Not only that, on Saturday, our president is going to be here to, uh, uh, you know, basically plead for help uh, to be more human. Uh, for the caravan. And not only that, people, uh, <clears throat> um, a lot of people, uh, you know, Irina Mujica, as you guys know, got arrested. And, you know, President Trump is tweeting that is uh, because of the 5% increase. Probably a lot of companies are going to go back to it. So, uh, a thing that we were talking a couple days ago. I think that we were a thing that we were talking about a couple days ago. A lot of people were asking me about a shooting that it was at the border. This kind of things happen. In our border. It's not breaking news. Really it's not. For me, that is not breaking news. Really it's not. I'm, I'm concentrated on what's going on in the south door. And really, yes, it's, it is important because a person died. It is important because a person died. But for you guys to know, this kind of things happen every year and every day and every month in our city. This kind of things happen over here. And it's another American that it was over here. Nobody's talking about it because he was an American. Let's get the facts straight. He was an American that he was over here and he was trying to traffic two people from Asia. These are the people that I'm telling you that they come over here from America and they traffic people because that is more easier for the coyotes. It's more easier. Why? Because you look American, you talk ext extremely good English, and you are a U.S. citizen. And you look American. And more if you are white. It is what it is, people. I'm not gonna hold my I'm not gonna hold my tongue. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put uh, little words right here to be like, if you are, it's the reality. It's the reality over here. You get a couple of those fellas, good ones. Oh my God, come over here. You're gonna be a good mule, man. You're American. You look American. Those are the good ones. And those ones are the ones. That the coyotes are always looking for. That the coyotes are always looking for. And this guy got caught in the middle. 
This guy got caught in the mix, like we say over here. He got caught in the middle. He got sent to the inspection. He got two people from Asia hidden on his car. The guy got nervous. Gunshots. And it's, it is what it is. That's, that's the things that they happen over here in the border. Those are the things that happen over here in the border. Those are the things that happen over here at the border. It's not, you know, it's not like, it's not, oh my God. Those kind of things happen over here. If, imagine if uh, we'd be talking about cartel stuff the whole day. Woo! There's pages over here in Tijuana that they talk the whole day. Day by day by day, hour and hour and hour and hour. I will never end. It will never end. That is not my purpose to talk about that, talk about those kind of things. If there was a shooting at the border, we already know what kind of shootings, you know, it's going on. That right there at the border, you're not going to see uh, a legal immigrant carrying a gun and it's because he's going to get stopped. He's going to pull up a gun and shoot. You're not going to see that more often that, you know, a typical guy that is trying to cross illegal people or drugs. Call it a night. Just, you, you're not going to tell us. Citizens of Tijuana, you're not going to tell us how this is run. How this is run. We know how this is run. And a lot of cartels grab American people. They're at the bar. Hey, 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 hey man, you want to make some money? Hey, hey. What kind of money? Easy. But yeah, but what? What kind? Four to five thousand, just one crossing. It's easy. You just go back and forth. I'll take it. It is like that. This guy works. They work in the clubs. They work in public places. And if they see Americans, and Americans go at it. And you see a lot of them coming over here and asking for work. It's the most easiest job. It's the most easiest job. It's the most easiest job. You see a lot of them, a lot of them, hundreds of them coming over here and asking for uh, asking the cartels for jobs. That's why I'm I've been telling you guys, and you guys don't listen. You guys think that this is a joke, but that's why I've been telling you guys that as as you guys ask us to go documented with a visa, with a permit, and legally to your country, it needs to be it needs to be handled exactly the same way. Alex Maldonado, ya puro inglés. No, acabo de hacer en español. Otro en español. Hago otro. It needs to be handled exactly the same way to our country. Exactly the same way. What are your purpose over here? Party. Okay. This guy came to party on a Saturday. This guy came back on a Saturday. This guy came back on a Sunday. This came back guy went back on a Sunday. This guy came back on a Monday. Hey, hold on a second. Three times in a row, party, party, and party. Something weird going on over here. Secondary, as they do when we are crossing to the United States. It is what it is, people. It is what it is. Security. You want security? We want security also. It's not supposed to be the same. It's supposed to be the same as border security. So it is what it is, people. It is what it is. This happened because an American came over here and, you know, and he came and he went back with people, crossing illegal people. He got busted at the border. He had nothing else to, you know, that's it. He got nervous. Confrontation with the, with the United States Customs. And that's what it is. It's no biggie, really. A person died, I'm sorry. A person passed away, I'm so sorry. 
But that those are the kind of things that happen at our border. People get like, oh my God, there's a shooting. Oh my God, there's this. Come on. Yes, there was a shooting. Yes. All right. Oh my God, they're gonna. Oh my God, 50 tons got 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 stopped at the border of cocaine. Oh my God. Let me go again live. Okay, what is 50 tons? Yes. Uh, what was the the other day? How many did they cross? 100. Uh, and the other day, 200. And the other day, 50 again. Okay. And they got caught only 50 this time. Okay. Let me do again the news. And it is just. It is all the day, every day, the same situation. It doesn't surprise me, really. It's not a thing that I'm really surprised. Because a lot of people were sending me messages like, Oh, Oscar, can you go and check? Can you go and see? Can you see what's going on? Can you see what is somebody happening? There was a shooting. Oh, my God, they're invading us. And now they're killing us. Come on, people. <laughs> it was just a guy that he was trying to cross two people from Asia in the car, he was American. He tried to make some money crossing people to America. And he got in the mix with the uh, United States Customs. And he passed away, unfortunately. God rest his soul. You know, he was young. That kind of stuff happens over here. That kind of things happen. It's not a thing that is, you know, oh my God. Breaking news. And for me, it's not. Really, for me, it's not. It's a, it's a normal thing. You know, God bless everybody. You know, but those are the kind of things, you know, that uh, that happen over here. Those kind of things are happening over here. The Mexico government get more money from family working in the U.S. that doing investments in the country and to uh, have better life in Mexico. Carmen Valiente, you're right, but, you know, tell the American people... That uh, stop hiring these illegals, please. So they, so they won't stop, you know, so they won't take advantage of the United States. Like I said every time, you want people to not get paid under the table and to not take advantage and not send money to Mexico? Stop hiring them. Stop benefiting them. Stop. Don't, don't, don't complain. Don't don't complain about oh they get paid under the table all the time. Look there, there he goes. Wanna go on construction? I bet he doesn't got paperwork, uh, Dorothy. I bet uh, she doesn't, Shannon. I bet that she does. He doesn't. Yeah, there's one girl that he always cleans the room of these hotels, and I bet I bet you that it's she doesn't have paperwork. Also, like oh my god, it's every day. Oh my god. Oh my God. Stop hiring them. Stop hiring them. Stop hiring them. Stop hiring them. Hiring them. Stop hiring them. Stop giving them benefits. Stop giving them benefits. Oh my God, there's like a big drug problem in America. Like it's like heroin is taking over. Like California is like done with heroin. I know the cartels, right? It's all fault of Mexico. It's like the cartel, right? It's like the cartel. Like it is just Mexico itself. Like it's Mexico itself, like the cartel. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. Stop being the provider. Stop buying it. Stop. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't. Oh my God, there's too many children that are getting traffic. Oh my God, there's too many in America that there's been in traffic in Mexico. So it's all Mexico's fault, right? It's all Mexico's fault. Like they're being trafficked. To to, uh, to the United States and they're bought over here in the United States. So I don't know. Stop buying them. Stop. Stop. And it will resolve all your problems. They're getting paid under the table. Stop hiring them. There's 20 tons of cocaine that they got. They're crossing every day. Stop buying it. 
There's churches over there in the United States that they're trafficking children. Go get them. Easy. Easy. I understand. I understand a construction guy, a plumber, an American guy that pays his taxes and it has his resident card or he's a U.S. citizen. He goes and he goes to the place that he needs to work and he says, like, how much for this work, man? $800. And there is, you know, Juan over there comes in the picture. Oh, man, I'll do that for $300. I hell with you and I will hire Juan. Stop hiring them. Oh my God, we're spending 188.9 billions of dollars in illegal immigrants in our country per year. Stop giving them benefits. Stop. I'm just, isn't it simple? Yeah, but it's going to affect our economy. It's going to go up and, you know, it's going to affect NASDAQ or whatever it is. It's going to affect or not. Oscar, I really need to debate you on that one. Bill Schultz, I'll listen to your debate and we can talk. Debate, I like that because you're, you want to talk to me and I like it. I like it, Bill Schultz. I like it. Send you a big hug. I don't understand. In Mexico, if you want me to talk about our country, stop the corruption. That's it. Stop it. Instead of me running on a red light and when I get to the and the, the cop stops me because this is this is I, I you know, this is a question that I always ask a, a Mexican citizen. I always ask this question to them. I tell them, the corruption, does, is it the corruption or the guy that does the corruption? Who is his fault? Is it el corrupto hace la corrupción or la corrupción al corrupto? Is the corruption, he corrupts the citizen or the citizen corrupts the, corrupt, uh, corrupts the corruptee? That's the question that I ask. So in Mexico, it's different. Why? Because our laws are so breaking every day. So I, if in Mexico, this happens. I run a stoplight. Bam. Bam. To the right, to the right. So you stop. And you're like, okay. I got to stop. And then you go like this. Immediately, immediately, a Mexican citizen does this. Wallet, take it out. My license is, my la my license, I don't have one. Plates, they're not updated. Insurance, who pays that? I'm just with the love of God every day and take me home. So I'm just like, okay, 100 pesos. Right here. I put it like this, I go like this, and I stay like this. He approaches the window and he says, uh, uh, buenos dias, good morning. Like, yeah, good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning. Buenos dias, buenos dias, señor, buenos dias, good morning. Uh, so, uh, I, you just run a stoplight. Ay, canijo, hijo de la... I'm so sorry. Eh, discúlpeme, discúlpeme, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're gonna have to tow the car. I got, you're gonna have to tow the car. Yeah, you, I'm gonna have to tow the car. You know, Article 70,065, and it doesn't even exist, but he invents an article. And he, you know, we can, you know, uh, come on, güero. They tell you güero. When you're brown, they tell you güero, and güero is white. So it's like a, you know, it's like a little joke. They try to make fun of your skin. No, it's it's, it's a, term, a terminology that cops use. Come on, güero, you know. You can do this, you know, come on. And then you start, ah, they push you to do this. So how can we arrange ourselves, officer? Just like, be honest, you know, come on. 
Come on, like, I want to go home. I got the kid in the back. You know, I've been tired. I've been working the whole day. Ah, cuanto traes? How much you got? Uh, you know, I got a... Uh, you know, I got a... You know, I got only 100 pesos. Okay. Ah, let's give it a nice little handshake. There you go. All right, officer. You're like, ah, we're done. Oh, oh. It's so different over here. It's really different over here. Really, it is. It depends on what you're doing. It goes up. So it's corruption. Over here, it's just corruption with a whole bunch of problems. But the main one is corruption. Over there in the United States, please, you're complaining about people getting underpaid under the table. Stop hiring them. You complain about so many drugs coming in. Stop buying it. You complain about all the benefits that they're giving them. Stop giving it to them. It is this what it is. It's simple. Really, it is. So, people, <laughs> I like to talk about those things. 100 pesos. This is a uh, hundred, and this is uh, how much is it? Cinco por ocho cuarenta, cinco por una nueve, that's noventa pesos. Uh, this is five dollars right here. Five dollars and some cash change. I just wanted to show you guys. This is five dollars in cash change. So it's, you know, just for you guys to know. So, uh, just recap for you guys to uh, realize. Uh, yes, uh, we have, uh, uh, there's uh, going to be, uh, they froze in the accounts of these organizations that they are helping the caravan. Uh, also, uh, the 5% increase apparently is working because they capture a guy that is a leader of, the, of a caravan that is caravan, uh, that is uh, Pueblo Sin Fronteras, Ireneo Mujica, he uh, captured it and then all that. And then after that, we talked about our president coming on Saturday and <clears throat> having a nice little talk. Uh, with us over here in downtown San Diego. And also, we, you guys are, you know, uh, you guys are also asking me about what happened the other day at the border. That's normal, typical things that happen over here at the border. I'm so sorry. I, you know, I felt bad for the guy, but it's just normal, typical things. There's been a lot of people killed at the border trying to cross illegal stuff or illegal people to the United States. It's been a bunch, a lot of them. So, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, ha. Ah. As I'm, I'm, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's things that happen when you try to do that and you get nervous and you try to act like you have something or you pull something or you shoot something. You know, it's, it's things that happen. So uh, there's a guy right here commentating right here. There's a guy that I want to address. Uh, there's a guy that, it, what, that, it, that I want to address right now. And uh, I want to talk to him right now and ask him a question. Uh, this is a really serious question that I want to ask this particular individual because he's constantly, constantly stalking me and he's constantly harassing me and he's constantly saying false stuff. So I just want to address this guy uh, right here in front of everybody right now. And this is comment right here. And I just want to give this guy, you know, a few minutes right here. I just want to ask this guy one question. Anthony. <laughs> Please, do a live video today. Everybody, everybody, tell Anthony to do a live video today. Anthony, please do a live video today. <laughs> everybody, say hello to Anthony. Anthony, do a live video today. Can, it, can, can everybody ask Anthony, Anthony, do a live video today. Anthony, do a live video today. Can everybody ask him that, please? If somebody can ask him that, you know, tell him that, uh, tell him that you miss him, and tell him that it, you know we need, we need the juicy stuff, man. We need the juicy stuff. Anthony, can you do a live video, please? Please. <laughs> Uh, everybody say it. Anthony, do a live video today. Anthony, please do a live video. Anthony, do a live video today. Anthony, go live. We need you. We need your cute face. Oh my God, he's uh, Glenda. He's 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 disgustingly awful. I don't know what you're talking about. He's uh, he's ugly. He, he's ugly. He's ugly. He's the ugly one in Puerto Rico news. Antonio, uh, please do a live video. Oh, they call you Antonio. Oh my God. 
Antonio, Antonio, do a live video. We love you, Anthony. Anthony, make a video today. There's uh, we miss you, Anthony. There's Anthony, we miss you. Do a live video today. There's people saying we love you, Anthony, and we want to see you, Anthony. There's people that say, Anthony, please do a live video today. Give us the juicy. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Give us the juicy stuff. Damn, Anthony. Anthony, there's Anthony. We need another date night. We need another date night. Anthony, we miss you smiling. Anthony, too busy doing uh, time graph pictures. Anthony, please do me not. Where have you been, Anthony? Where have you been, Anthony? Uh, are you getting pay for not give us the right news, Anthony? <laughs> are you working with CNN now, Anthony? Uh, Anthony, do a live video today. Uh, we miss your lives. We miss you, Anthony. Anthony, it's tearing on my heart when I'm not with you. Come on, Brittany. Do a live video today. Where are you? Uh, there's people saying, Anthony, get off your butt <laughs> and do a live video. Anthony, please do a live video today. Uh, he has forgotten us, his, his people. Oh, my. That, that's rough right there, Anthony. Oscar, uh, sorry but not sorry. And yes, Anthony, please go live. And, uh, Oscar is fine. Oscar is fine, LOL. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, all right. I, I feel you, sister, I feel you. That's that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, also, uh, oh, Anthony is adorable, but Oscar is too. Come on, that's giving me the pity. You were not gonna do that. Anthony is horrible, I am the guy right here. Anthony is horrible. He's like the Backstreet Boy that nobody cares. That one. That's Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, where are you? They're asking him. We want another date. Uh, Oscar doing all the work at BNN. You're not doing nothing. Uh, you know, come on. Come on, Anthony. Where are you? Wake up. Wake up. All right, people. I wanted to address that guy. You know, I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to be like, where he's at, man? Where he's at? Where he's at, man? Where you at? Show me where you at. Show me where you at, man. Show me your work. Show me that work that you used to put in, man. What's up with you, man? Show me that. <laughs> All right, people. It was nice talking to you guys. Phenomenal. Uh, people, you know, sometimes you get into some personal stuff that I re uh, get really, you know, I'm overprotected with that kind of subject. So please, I will advise you guys to not talk about that. Uh, and, uh, they, look, Anthony, Dora Fernandez is saying, that's true, Oscar is very handsome. In your face, huh, John Cena. John Cena in your face, Anthony. <laughs> All right, have a beautiful day today. We will see each other later on this afternoon, and we will talk about different subjects. I got something special for you guys later on tonight, special news for you guys tonight. Uh, probably I'm going to have, uh, you know, a uh, guest. Uh, with me and oh let's pray that Anthony does a live video let's just pray that Anthony gets up you know he gets a little shower and he, and he does a little little comb hair right there and his little copetito right there and he gets dressed and he's like hey guys hey guys you know how he does <laughs> you know you know like he, he's really like hey he's really mellow you know like hey guys How's everybody doing, guys? Like that. You know, we, we want that. We want that, man. Where are you? Where are you? Wake up. So have a great day, everybody. We will see each other later on this afternoon. And uh, we will get more information for you guys. God bless you. God bless America. God bless Mexico. God bless Tijuana. Viva Tijuana. Viva Mexico. Viva Mexico. And God bless everybody. We will see each other to, uh, later on this afternoon. We will see Anthony, hopefully, later on this afternoon. Border Network News says, peace. And love, everybody. And always, your country first.